Francesca Faye again. I hope everyone's had a wonderful day, whatever they've been up to. It's actually been quite a sunny day here in the, in the northwest of England, but I hope everyone's keeping well. And I just want to say, I'm nearly near 3,000 views and I've got 32 subscribers, so a massive thank you to you all for constantly tuning in, watching my covers, watching my cerebral palsy videos and most importantly flying the flag for cerebral palsy because I will not stop until cerebral palsy is heard loud and clear so keep keep doing what you're doing guys please keep subscribing, liking and commenting because all your unconditional love and support really does mean the world to me so thank you very very much so today I want to speak to you about the inevitable really. I want to speak to you about what to do when the time comes if your child is really severely ill with cerebral palsy and if it has come to the decision to withdraw life support. Now I've never been in that situation but I have seen appeals on TV where a child has sadly died due to additional complications due to the cerebral palsy. And I just want to say, if, if there's anyone that has, then I'm really, really sorry. But um, I'd say, I'd say to you all as well, like, don't be afraid because you, you guys, have pa as parents, you've done the best possible thing by fighting to keep your child alive. But also, you've given them the chance to succeed. You've given them the opportunity to fly. So. I just want to speak to you about some of the things you can do to try and help you within that grieving process. Number one is try and get a box together of all your different things. Maybe have some handprints or footprints done of your child. Number two, always try and seek bereavement counselling. I know this is easier said than done, but talking to somebody about how you feel does make a massive difference. And it will help you to move on. It won't take the pain away, but it will help you to move on in the right direction. And number three is cry when you need to as well, because like I said in the mental health video, we're all guilty of holding back our negative feelings. And crying actually helps you to get it all out. And it is a healthy way of thinking because it helps release all those emotions you've been feeling inside for so many months. Number five, take as many pictures as you can as well. That way you can look back on certain on certain days and just know that if your child is in that situation then he's no he or she is no longer in pain. She's they're now in they're now in peace. And number six is don't be afraid to talk. You know, if you need to pick up that phone and speak to a friend or speak to a bereavement counsellor, then please do, because nobody, I mean, nobody should have to go through this, but sadly it is, it is part of life. And sometimes with cerebral palsy, we're not always lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones because I don't have any other additional things wrong with me like I don't get a lot of chest infections and I don't have a feeding tube but for some people that for some children and young adults that is how it is unfortunately and I just want to say to all those who who are who have lost people who have lost children or who are currently getting ready to lose someone because of their illness and then well done for, for fighting and keeping brave for so long so here's a few of my tips on how to cope if the inevitable should arise. But I really, really do hope if you are going through this, then please try and stay strong as possible because it really, really does make a massive difference. And I just want to say that you're not alone. So I, I hope everyone's had a wonderful day and I will speak to you very, very soon. Bye.